G minor. Jump on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome.
Welcome again. We are Black Violin. Kev Marcus, Will Baptiste here. How you guys doing? Really talks about a lot of different nuances of you know American history. It's called Black AF. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> Black, Black AF. Yeah, that's uh, American history for sure. You know, watch some Ozark, some Netflix, uh, watch a little bit of everything. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, doing some practicing here and there. Been working on just I don't know, just trying to be different with it. You know, always trying to find something different to do with this instrument and trying to, you know, think outside the box and, and, and do something else. So, um, well, welcome, welcome. You know, today is supposed to be a class about songwriting and jump training level three, but we decided to switch it up, you know, because, you know, it's our class. And we could do whatever we want to do. Pretty much. So, um, you know, we wanted to do something different and we wanted to talk about, you know, instead of songwriting and, um, and jump training, just kind of freestyle that we want to start talking about a little bit about effects and how that works and kind of some of the stuff that we do down here with our instruments, how we manipulate sound. We also want to talk to you guys also how we practice, you know, how do we warm up in the morning? How do we get ready for a, a 90 minute concert? And how do we just keep our chops going? And, um, and also just like, you know, how do you, why do you even practice? Like, what are you practicing? What are you trying to do? You know, so we want to get into all of that with you guys. Um, you know, uh, of course, after this class, you can go to blackviolin.net forward slash uh, masterclass for additional resources from the one and only Don Hicks. Um, thank you, Don Hicks. Shout out to Don Hicks and Bethune Elementary for that. Don Hicks. Um, at the end of this, we're going to do a, a performance of Dreamer, you know what I mean? We haven't been able to play on stage, so I think uh, it's kind of nice to be able to play a song at the end of each one of these just to play for ourselves and also give you guys watching kind of a, a cool uh, a cool kind of duo stripped down version of these songs so um, stick around for after the Q&A make sure you know you answer your questions you we're gonna we got somebody looking at it um, shout out to Lex and Jenny that's in the house always taking care of the behind the scenes stuff <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know ask questions please along the way um, we'll try to answer them throughout the throughout the the master class and also at the very end uh, make sure that you are, if you're watching us on YouTube, you subscribe below. Make sure you tell a friend about this. Um, and also uh, follow us on Facebook, Black four slash Black Violin Music, Instagram, and Twitter at Black Violin. And subscribe to our YouTube page. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe. So, um, so today, basically, you know, like we said, we're trying to basically uh, discuss how we warm up every day and, um, and what our approach to practicing is. And we also want to give you guys an introduction into sound effects for your violin or any instrument you play and um, and talk about why to us that's important, you know, and um, and th these are really kind of fun to us. This is going to be a real fun class. So I'm uh, really excited uh, to review last week. We talked about kind of finding the key to a song. So remember, we were like, if we play, you know, you know, you have to try to kind of, you know, meander along. Oh, that's G, you know, and just try to find it. We're trying to get you guys to train your ears so that when you hear that hot song that's out or you want to create your own song, you jump in and go like, oh, that's in D. I got it. I know how to play D major, D minor. I can kind of vibe and figure my way out on this. And that's the first um, feeling to that, you know. Um, we're talking about chord progressions. You know, how 151 feels like it's, a, it's a something that needs to be answered. So just kind of where it feels like it needs to go and music is science too so you know we want to just go teach you one five one and a little bit of perfect fifths we talked about major and minor that's major and that's minor and how those two you know scales can basically you know make you feel a certain way makes you write a certain way it depends on what you're trying to do um and again it's just like all the science right 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 pretty much and then uh we also talked about dissonance versus resonance just sort of uh the idea of uh and why there's tension there compared to There's resonance right before, there's what they call, you know, there's dissonance right before resonance. So, you know, if you hear it dissonant and sounding really tense, then you're close. So, um, talking about dissonance and resonance. Also talked about what made a good song. That was probably my favorite part of that. You, what do you remember most from, from that discussion? Will? Well, we spoke about, you know, how typically songs are, um, are constructed. And this is, you know, I've heard, I've heard, I hear songs that are just, literally just people just 
talking environment. So this is not necessarily a, a concrete, this is how you're supposed to do it. But majority of songs, to me, have a song. We spoke about how these songs have stories, and they're telling these stories, how the hook is, the chorus is the kind of like the theme of that story. And the verses are kind of like the chapters of that story. So we spoke about just how these songs are structured and how these songs are put together. So it was, it was kind of cool. Yeah, you know, so, you know, you can go back and, uh, and watch songwriting and jump training level two just to, you know, get a, a vibe of that. We also talked about kind of the popular formats of a song, like, you know, like verse and like Will just said, the chorus slash hook. And there's also the bridge, there's outros, there's intros, there's all kind of things to it, but just, you mm -hmm. know, just so when you hear that, that song that you love, that part that comes over and comes on over and over and over, that's called a chorus. In pop versions, they call it a hook, because it hooks you, that's the part that you sing. The verses are just the parts in between, necessarily, the parts that, you know, tell the story. But the hook and the chorus, like, that is the thing that gets you, so we wanted to touch on that. You know, for more of a, a review on that, go, go back and check us out um, at, uh, on our last episode of... Uh, Black Friday Masterclass. Um, all right, so let's get into it. So, you know, when we just set up, you know, we kind of get here about an hour before we set all these pedals and, you know, kind of get our, our things together. Um, how do we, how do you warm up? Well, like, what's the first thing you do? You pull out your viola. What, you know, what do you do? And also, you know, tell us, you guys, too, you know, in the comments below, what do you guys do to warm up? We'd love to hear what you do. But we want to tell you a little bit just of how we get our day going as musicians, as, 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 um, as violists and violinists. Well, the first thing I do is I tune. You want to make sure that your instrument is in tune. And uh, you guys should know how to tune. But if you don't, let me demonstrate. So what I do is I find an A. I either There's an app that I use on my phone. It's a really cool app. And, um, and I just play an A, and I just find the A. Or you can have a tuner. Once it's tuned, um, I just kind of I play a scale or something. Well, what are you listening for in that scale? Um, I'm listening for me, and when I try to play scales, I'm I'm not necessarily listening or anything. I'm focusing on my my um, my bow hole, and I'm focusing on just like making sure that. Because a lot of times for me, when I warm up, I try not to, I try to focus on things that I can develop bad habits. You know what I'm saying? Because for me, like performing a lot on stage, I develop, I can develop like little bad habits, you know, like not necessarily having my, my hand all the way around the, um, the neck of the instrument or just having bad bow hold. Because a lot of times my pinky would just kind of just start lifting or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's a find of his own, that pinky. So, you know, when I when I start in the morning or whenever I pick up my instrument, I tune. I'll just honestly what I what I really do is I play open strings. You know, I just play straight open strings, no scale or nothing, just to focus on those things that I feel like I'm developing a little bad habits like that. You know what I mean? So when I when I start, I make sure boom, I get that. I'm I'm focusing on my bow hole, I'm focusing on holding the holding the instrument the right way. I'm focusing on just making sure that Everything is consistent with that open string. And um, for violist, it's a little different in terms of, because um, for me, what I was taught by Miss Meyer, shouts out to Miss Meyer, she's probably watching, is to uh, to use the weight of the arm, your, the weight of your arm. You know what I mean? You don't want to necessarily push the sound you want the sound to come out very naturally and and as violas it's a big instrument so you have to you know you gotta use a little bit of muscle not necessarily muscle but the weight of the arm so I try to practice that because a lot of times when I'm playing I'm amplified a lot on stage right so I don't have to force as much as I, I would if I'm just playing acoustic so just working on little things like that that sometimes you just don't think about when you're just 
on stage and it's loud. You know what I mean? So you got to make sure you're doing all these little things because you don't want to develop little bad habits along yeah, the way. You know? Facts. And then also it's interesting you said like the open strings because, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, especially when I was younger, I would want to start practicing and play a bunch of notes, you know. Right. And it wasn't until I got older and had been playing for a long time that you realize that you can tell a good thing. But at the same time, if you just... can learn a lot just by hearing how someone plays an open string and that's the hardest thing to do a lot of times as string musicians you know side note i'm um i'm teaching my wife how to play viola don't ask me why <laughs> she's been bugging me and i gave her a first 15 minute lesson um last night and um and i told her listen we're gonna just play open strings for the next six months so <laughs> don't think you're gonna try to learn the next beyonce or whatever it's just just know that we're gonna start with open strings for six months She's like, well, we can't just start in the middle. I'm like, no, you can't start in the middle. <laughs> we got to start from the bottom. So yeah. just understand, like, just playing open notes is, is, it is tedious and as boring as it sounds. Trust me, like, if you can play an open note perfectly, you know what I'm saying, with the bow hole being right and, and everything like that, trust me, like, you're, you're heading in the right direction. And then, like, really focus on the bow changes, you know? Like, for me, I'm, re I'm, I'm pretty good at the, t at the tip. But at the frog sometimes, it'll get that, it'll get that crunchy thing. So I focus mostly on that. When I practice, mm -hmm. I'm just really trying to play. If I could play an open D and right. make you cry, then I know I'm doing something right, right. just by playing that. Then you're putting fingers down is is, is a, a easier thing. But so I spend a ton of time on open open strings and 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 just tuning, feeling the instrument, hearing it. What I'm also listening for is just like even when I tune, you know, when you're listening for that uh, that perfect fifth, you're listening for that ring. <laughs> Even during it, I'm tuning my ears too. I'm trying to like, right. like that feels good. You know, that's when that that feels like it's in tune. Right. And you know, I'm just trying to always make sure my ears are like almost working out. You know, even when I'm practicing or tuning, trying to make sure that like I'm as in tune as possible. Because then when I'm playing, like I'm really in. You know, just I want to make sure. Start really listening, and your ears start getting in tune. Right. And then you stop having to even worry about playing the note in tune because your your body and your your mind and your ears are right, do right. It. Anyway, so I I just do a lot of slow practice, a lot of you know open strings mostly. Then of course you know you do scales and arpeggios. Right. A lot of times I've been doing scales and arpeggios. I don't just do them to do them. I do them to work on something. So like lately I haven't even been doing full full scales. I'll just do. A and because right now you see my finger, first finger just pulled up, so I'm really trying to work on keeping everything down. And and practicing is just like figuring out what you want to work on. You know, mm -hmm. these are little things that you know. Not my teacher saying anything. It's just me feeling like I need to fix that. And I make little exercises, just trying to do that and keep all four fingers down. And then I'll alternate. And I'm just focusing on one thing, but trying to trying to do it in different ways so that almost it tricks my mind so my mind is just like oh you want to keep all the fingers down i'll just right. do that all the time you know because you're trying to outsmart me you know it's funny i think um a lot of students always think that what do you think what's the most important hand you Everyone know what i mean it's the left hand i mean you know you would think because the left hand does all this the right. vibrato is first position third position fifth position you know um it's it you know you don't want to press too hard there's so many moving parts with it yeah yeah there is. I mean, I think most people think it's the left, but I personally think it's probably the right. It's you know definitely I mean? the right. And and I think, and it's funny because it's like you know, like you just mentioned, like the left hand is like you. It's 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 almost like it's the fun hand. Eh? You're playing all the notes or whatever. But trust me, if this right hand ain't right, if your bow hole isn't right, and just having the pinky once in a while just lifting up, it just kind of, it it kind of drains the the tone and the sound a little bit. You know what I mean? Just all these little things that the the right hand brings to the table. It, to me, it's just so important that you focus on the right hand. You know, as much as the left, le left hand is important too, but the right hand is just so, so crucial. Because if you can get this right, if you can get this rolling perfectly, I mean, it, it's just a matter of time that right hand is just going to follow. I mean, yeah. the left hand is just going to follow, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's true. Like, you know, uh, Ms. Meyer used to say something about maybe like 70% of the work is the right hand. And yeah. I think that's why it's good to open up 
with just open strings, exactly. like good tuning regimen. Ten, you know, ten minutes just hearing it. Also, I find with the acoustic instruments, not so much even the carbon fiber, but like just the, the natural wood instruments, they need to be opened up like that. Mm -hmm. Like when you just play and you're just letting the, the it like you know the fifths just ring, it it almost like it warms the instrument right. itself too. So I think that's important. Um, and then once you start playing the left hand, what what are you thinking? Like you know, once you in in the practice, you've done your open strings, like right. you start putting your left hand down. You know, what, what's one of your go-to things to, like, get your left hand going? The, the thing that um, I've been working on for the past, like, couple of months is making sure that my hand is, like, really flat, right? So I don't even have to really – because a lot of times when I'm playing, I develop this habit where I, without me knowing it, I'm making more steps than I need to. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. when I'm playing – I play the first note, whatever. If I'm playing just a regular G major scale, like. Like a lot of times I develop this bad habit where my left hand starts kind of going further down. So mm -hmm. so next thing you know, I'm just like. So it's, it's <laughs> you know, it becomes where I'm making it harder on myself. You know what I mean? So I've been focusing on just like making sure that that my fingers are right on top of the the note so it's just like boom there's no extra step it's just like boom and also too you're in tune so much you don't really you're not necessarily trying to find the note necessarily it's just it's always there you know what i'm yeah. saying you don't even got to think about it especially mm -hmm. if you're doing a lot of shifting too mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i've been i've been focused on that because again you know we do something that is very dope and very unique but it's it's easy to fall into these little bad Habits yeah, I think for everybody, too, you know what I mean? Like, for all kids, I remember, you know, uh, when I was growing up, and uh, my main thing was I would always collapse my hand because it just right. felt more comfortable, you know? Right. And, you know, I had a teacher just kind of, you know, really, really drill me on it, and then I all of a sudden doing it like this. And I think also it was like once I realized, oh, this is so much easier than yeah. this, it made me kind of really, yeah. you know, fo focus on it. So I also think about, like, this vibrato. Vibrato is one of my main things I'm working on with my left is that with my, my third finger, I feel like I can do it. I have all kinds of vibratos. My first finger is very narrow. So I've been just sort of, like, back to back to the basics on it. Right. And I'll drill it with a metronome just to, like, you know, really. And triple it. Sixteenth note, and then just really, and just focusing on that. So mm -hmm. that, the, you know, beginning like again, it's all about what you want to work on. Like, right. You know, what about yourself? About your playing? Do you notice? Uh, and sometimes it'll be like you know, you sit next to this other player, and like man, like you know, how, how did that person do that? And you'd be like, right. all right, I want to figure that out. And then you just figure out a way to practice it, and you know, you know, work it. Also, you know, everything, less is more, you know. The less you do is the better. If you're trying to get, you know, you say first to third. And I'm, I, overst I mean, I under. You know, just trying to, you know, practice shifting. Right. Real soft. And it's not even perfect. You see, I'm not, I'm, I have a lot of work to do, but then I'll right. try to be. And then even with shifting, I always find the slower you do it, the better it is, even right. though it's something fast that needs to be precise. Right. But when I slow my mind down, I'm able to shift, you know, a little bit better. Right. So those are just like kind of examples of kind of things that we're always working on. You guys are at different levels, you know, various levels, depending on where you're at. You know, so I think um, I always just try to think like, hey, well, I want to figure out how to vibrato. Or, hey, I want to figure out uh, how to connect my notes. And then, you know, I think YouTube's also a good resource. Mm -hmm, um, absolutely. You know, it's awesome videos there to do that. And just always be working on yourself. But, you know, less is more. Start with open strings and kind of go that go that route. Um, and if you guys have a question about how we work on certain specific things, you know, send a, you know, send a comment and uh, we'll give you a quick answer. Yeah. So what's your approach to practicing? I mean, you know, uh, teachers all the time ask us and parents are like, well, you know, Susie needs to practice more. How many hours did you practice growing up? And um, and even, you know, I won't even lie to you. I wasn't a big practicer when I was growing up. I played a lot. 
I was in many orchestras and I had it every day, you know. Um, I didn't really start practicing later on until uh, I started kind of feeling a vibe and was able to like wanted to work on things for myself. But when, one thing that I did do, as, and I would think is a really, really good um, piece of advice, is that I never wasted time on the instrument. Like, even when I'm on stage every night, I'm working on something. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just don't, I think that if I'm, if I can give you any advice is that I don't practice all day, every day, but when I do practice, I, when I play, I'm always practicing. I'm not just ever playing just to play, I'm always playing you know, with an intent on working on something. Right. And I, to me, that's that's better than the p- person that, you know, because I used to do it in college where I would go and I'm like, oh, I got to practice this sonata or whatever. And I just go in the practice room and be learning it, but I won't even be thinking about it. I'm just there putting that hour in, but I'm not actually Focus. focused on right. it. And that to me is more of a wasted, you know, hour than if I spent five, five good, good minutes really, really focused on it. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is, that, is that kind of your take on it as well? Absolutely, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just in, in anything, right? If you're sitting there and you're focused and you're um, specifically working on something very specific, I mean, you're going to uh, – it's going to help you get better. You know what I mean? If you're just kind of picking up the instrument and you're playing your first – you know, your favorite song that you already know that you've played for years, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, and you know you sound good, how are you going to learn? You know what I mean? If you're working out, you only want to do the workout that is, like, easy to you. You know what I mean? How are you going to get better? So it's it's the same kind of thing. So we can't be afraid to do the things that are difficult. That's how we get better. You know what I mean? And we got to be able to, even if it's scales, even if it's open strings, just focus. You're focusing on that right hand, making sure that bow hold is perfect. Okay, if that's what it is, then just focus on that for, like, 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that 10 minutes is better than just playing your favorite song for, like, an hour or two. <laughs> Exactly, over and over and over. So, you know, just just know that every time you pick up the instrument, always be practicing. That's sort of our, our mantra. Don't ever waste time practicing just mindlessly, just in a room, just right. playing always be practicing and when you are practicing and when that's the time focus on what you're doing and give me give us 15 minutes of focus practice rather than an hour of just staring at this music you know right. and i think that's the most Im- important thing about mm-hmm. practicing and you know obviously try to practice every day you know what i mean but but more importantly don't waste time when you play this <laughs> instrument you know always be getting better so that is don't waste sh- time period <laughs> yeah, trust definitely in life in general so that's uh that's our spiel on practice. Um, you know, if you guys have any other um cool ideas and just ways that you guys practice, we would love to hear them. Um, you know, just drop a comment. We'll you know talk about it at the end of this um of this class. Um, on to our part two. Our part two is sound effects. This is one of my favorite types of things. Love talking about sound effects. We do a lot with sound effects, and we get a lot of questions about it. So this is a cool way that we can um, show you guys sort of what, what we're doing here and, and, and what we're coming up with. So, so what, what are, are sound effects? effects? Who, who, who um, how, how do you use them? Um, and, you know, what's, 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 what's kind, kind of the deal, deal with these? So, so um, sound effects are basically ways to manipulate this instrument or any sound. So, so you take a, a sound, take the sound of this microphone or the sound of these instruments, and you can put them through different um, algorithms and different um, effects, different basically pieces of gear or software, like you guys have had, if you have GarageBand, you have sound effects in there. Um, it, it's very similar to um, an Instagram filter. That's probably the best way to, to say it. A Snapchat <laughs> filter is sort of it. It just affects whatever it is that you're putting in it and, you know, does its own thing based on the parameter that that's already set. So right. there's all kinds of different ones as far as audio sound effects are concerned. Um, and, you know, we're going to kind of give you just a, a quick overview of some of the, the, the gambit of what they are. So first... Um, Let's talk about EQ, which is an equalizer, right? So right. Um, sound is, you know, you probably would think about it, you know, EQ, the best way to think about it is if yeah. you have maybe, maybe a speaker, speaker or, or, you know, you have some sort of audio device and it says, says bass, bass and it says treble, treble right? right? right. So, so bass is the low sound of anything. So low bass is that, you know, it's, it's all about that bass, bass no right. treble type thing, right? So it's about the that, that bottom, that thing that hits your chest when it's loud, you know? So, you know, for instance, if you guys have headphones and maybe we could show you a little demonstration um, of, of how this EQ works so so like you know an idea basically of how this works is that you know if we wanted to give you all bass and no treble and you know let you hear how something sounds so right now it's normal that's 
that's all bass, so you just hear the bassiness of it. All trouble. So basically, that's the difference between bass and treble. Bass is like the low bottom, and the treble is like the high kind of like you know you think of like a flute as a treble, right. uh, high hats are a treble, right. um, and, and then there's mids, which right. will, you know land land right in the middle of it. And EQ is an interesting thing; you can do a lot of different things with it. For me, I played viola growing up, you know, um, you know, um, so I think I'm just not used to this E string that I have here. So I'm always deading the treble and boosting the bass for me because right. that's how I want my violin to sound. And because of that, I have my own sort of sonic signature. And Will's is different. You know, everyone has a different thing. And, like, that's sort of part of our musical characteristic is the way that our our violins are, are processed and EQ'd. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you said, the, the EQ equalizes basically the, the way that you manipulate the signal whether you want more of the bottom, the bass, and the treble. Like my bass, my EQ right now is a bass EQ, which um, it's already a viola, so it's a, it's it's already kind of dark anyway. But if I were to boost the, the lows a little bit. Pretty low, right? And then you could even hear like the bow strokes when you do that, you know? Because, I mean, bow strokes are part of, of all this equation as well when you're kind of trying to find your, your sonic sound, your, your, your equalizer. So, so I right. took the I took most of the lows out, and I just amped up the treble. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> it sounds really thin. Sounds terrible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, and it's funny that you did the same thing that I did, and, and your violin didn't sound too bad when no, you used no, no, the treble. No, no, Violin is naturally, uh, uh, the signal is naturally high, so <laughs> yeah. that's why it didn't sound too terrible. But my viola, I like, I like, it's almost, I want a cello on my, on my shoulder. So it's just, I, I like to, I like it as warm and as, as bassy as possible. So that's one, um, one process, one EQ, one effect that we use a lot. It's almost like a standard and, and all of these effects that we're using are typically effects that guitarists use, right? Electric guitar, but you know, this is 2020, so we try to. <laughs> Try to switch it up and switch try to do different up. things. Um, another um, effect that I like using as well is called the, um, it's, it's an octave. Or basically, it brings everything down an octave lower. And um, right now, it's, it sounds regular. Hold on. If I were to bring, if I were to trigger the octave. <laughs> like a cello on your shoulder right <laughs> <laughs> so this 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 effect is really really useful especially when you're creating music and you want to add a cello it doesn't necessarily sound exactly like a cello but when you mix it in with a lot of different instrument i mean it, you can you can definitely make it blend in with some strings and it's very very useful especially when you're creating music and it's just fun to use you know what i mean especially when you're using a loop station and and you're creating a melody and you want to add a little bass to it. It's mm -hmm. just it's a it's a really, really effective uh, effect that I like to use yeah. quite a bit. Well, what about distortion? I mean, is that something that you do? A absolutely. Ton of? Absolutely. I have this one right here. It's called uh, the OCD. It's kind of like a bluegrass. It, it's not as it's not uh, heavy metal necessarily. It's, it's more, more of a. More of a more, more of a blues type, type distortion. Mm -hmm. And what is distortion in general? I mean, it's it's, it's basically you know what it is really. Distortion is really emphasizing the warmth extremely. Like just basically just if you look at if you um if you if you look up like preamps like in in studio like a lot of studio have these things called preamp which basically amplifies any signal whether it's vocals instrument it makes it sound really good there's different different kinds and there's ones that have tubes and the ones that have tubes provide a lot of warmth and a lot of just warm sounding and if you jack up the gain of that preamp it's it's distorted you know what i mean because you don't you don't want it to sound like that if you're doing vocals but essentially i think that's what that does is really it just kind of just like takes that signal and just 
boosts up. It makes it makes it just it distorts it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the word distorts it. So um, a lot of guitars use it. I use it a lot when I'm just plucking and I'm just messing around because it's just it makes me sound like a guitar and I just feel like I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm having my little Jimi Hendrix moment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So well, give him a little taste of it. that did you throw I on threw a, a tremolo into like a like a tremolo like a like yep those? pretty much the single is pretty much just clean straight when i add the tremolo to it that's cool right <laughs> <laughs> so you're combining a distortion and a and a tremolo exactly at the same time. exactly and then exactly. now it's like your own thing like there's no one that's doing that exact way, right. that exact sound with that instrument, that and that's how you like start creating your own like almost your own signature. Exactly. Things, you know, so that's what the beauty of this, this the sound effects are. Is just like you know you can kind of turn into something else, and you don't just have to play the violin like everyone else is able exactly. to, to to do some different things with it. So um, how about you give us an idea of that looper that you have down there, just there, uh, and then let's maybe make something out of all these effects that you just kind of showed us. Let's see. you to do the same spend 10 minutes um you know sometime this week you know just with your instrument just playing open strings just really getting that vibe just you know really allowing your instrument to open up allowing your ear to be trained focus on you know connecting your sound having a beautiful sound and then also if you have access to um you know effects it'd be great for you to check it out um the effects that we have are um you know just we'll, we can do a little picture of everything that we have so you can right. see what we're working with but if you have garage band you want to plug into that and you know try that exactly. out um right. anyone that has a macbook pro or a macbook has garage band on it so you know you could definitely check that out right. um there's so many different things um that are out there available to you um and then also there's a couple of you know kind of kind of starter pedals that we can 
you know, tell you to tell your parents to go grab that for you. But right. it's a good starter starter thing. Um, and you don't also you don't have to have electric violins. All you need is a pickup for your acoustics. Right, I'm um, using acoustic viola, yeah. even though I have uh, my lady back here. <laughs> um, yeah, you can use an acoustic uh, instrument. Just uh, just plug it in and just go. You know. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, um, you know, self study. Ten minutes with yourself, trying to f- you know just play open strings and just really tune your ear. You know, connect your sound. And see what you can do on effects, you know, if you have access to it. Um, it uh, if you, you know, try to plug in, see what you could do. If not, you know, ask your parents to hook you up with something, you know. And send them some video, man. If you if you got a nice little thing going on at your house and, you, and you're vibing, just record yourself. I, we would love to see it. Yeah, so. send it to blackviolentv at gmail.com. Or you could, like, DM us on all the social stuff, you know. Um, and it'll be easier to, probably easier to email it because we'll definitely get those. So. Um, all right, cool. Do we have any questions? Yes. Oh, sweet. Great nice. question. Uh, asking about our song A Flat and how did it get picked up for the TV show Pitch that was on Fox. Um, that show, um, it got picked up on there because we actually composed or co composers on that show. And um, one of the coolest things we ever got a chance to do was to compose for, for the show. It was based on um, a girl who was an African-American um, woman who was the first pitcher in the big leagues. A uh, super cool show. And then they decided to use our song A-flat for the first four minutes of the, uh, of the show, right. which was sweet. And then we ended up co-composing the show um, for our whole season. And it lasted a season. And it, it's really cool. It's really good to do it. So, Yep. We got a lot of great opportunities doing what we do and um, just really creating music. And um, the way that song came about is we just, one of our friends, um, Infamous, shouts out to DJ Infamous. That was his beat, and he played the beat. We loved it. Kevin came up with a, um, a melody, and um, <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and the producers, honestly, of that show heard that song and they were like yo this song is what this show should be about this is how the the show the music should be you know what i mean so it's amazing it was a great opportunity because not not too often that we get an opportunity like that where they just want us to just be us and just create music that we would normally create so it was really really cool sweet uh tatiana wants to know about the how, how do we learn vibrato vibrato is one of those things that comes over time yeah. I think that, you know, kind of what we were saying at the, be- at the beginning, there's... We're actually, just try third finger. Just slowly bend it, and then, you know, so if you do it... The next time... And... And 16 notes. Then wicked fast. Right. And that's the progression. That's the only way you can do it. The only way you can learn it is start slow, just you know, and then just go quicker and quicker. I find that third, second fingers for me at least are easier right. um, to start with, and then first and fourth finger is the the hardest. Yeah, uh, the fourth finger is, fourth, is yeah. that's a doozy. It's a, thin, it's a little weak finger. It's hard. Right. But yeah, use a metronome. And just practice over time. You'll get it. Yeah, it's also great YouTube videos on it. I look at them every now and then just to like up my vibrato game because there's different types of vibrato's wrist this finger so like you know just just do some research on it and figure out kind of what your sound wants to be kimberly asked what app do we tune with i think it's called tuner pro like yeah. it's not only like first of all it's really cool to tune with it's good to practice with because there's every note that's on you know, available so you can play it from you know you know the lowest c to the lowest to the highest e there's different notes so you can have it be an oboe it could be a piano their sounds are really good and then say you, you're trying to work on you know some drone practice like you know so you just put it on g and just have like a nice g going while you're playing minuet or whatever else right. you're playing and it allows you to really t- tune with it and you always have a tuner in your pocket no matter what yeah. so you can add, you can actually play two notes at the same time, three notes at the same time. It's yeah, really, it's really super cool, super powerful um, tuner. And it's just like and Kev it's, said. And it's it your, sounds good, which yeah. is the main thing. It's not just this weird sounding A. It really does sound good. So I, it's called Tuner Pro. Kristen wants to know, what are some tips for teachers that are teaching online? Mm. What are some tips for teachers that are teaching online? Um, 
Good question. Um, if you're t if you're teaching online, I'm sure you're using some sort of FaceTime thingy, Zoom probably. Um, what I would suggest is do a lot of uh, a lot of demonstrating, like letting the kids demonstrate to you. You know what I mean? Like talking to them and let them demonstrate, and do a lot of some of the stuff that we were doing. They're not gonna like it, you know. <laughs> they're the boring <laughs> stuff, but. I think focus on all those little things, man, I think is crucial and is important, especially because a lot of the kids have a lot of time on their hands. They're not really doing a lot. So I think doing that and, and letting them, like, demonstrate that, you know what I mean? Like, play for them and show them what done, but make sure they do the majority of demonstrating to you so you can, like, see what they're doing and you can kind of, like, give them tips and how to move and, 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 and adjust their playing. Um, yeah, and I think uh, just the fundamentals, man. Um, and also, too, don't be afraid to, I mean, a lot of students, a lot of teachers are probably not used to, you know, doing something like freestyling or anything like that. But I think it'll, especially during these times, I think it will definitely be encouraging to the kids to really see their teacher who wouldn't typically try to play a Bon Jovi song or whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I think it'll be kind of fun just – I think it's important to try to make this instrument and this, uh, make it fun, you know what I mean? So I think trying to ex experiment with the kids to, to engage them in that way, you know, try to play some Cardi B maybe, something that they like. And, <laughs> yeah, you may not be able to play it right, but it, it'll get them interested in really practicing and getting better, you know what I mean? It's kind of like reading, you know what I mean? Like, you know, my kids probably don't want to hear, listen or read some, you know, romantic novel or whatever my, my my son loves like you know cartoons or whatever so maybe i'll give him like you know like a a, a marvel comic and he'll read that or whatever you know what i mean so it's just the same thing so i think it's 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 really cool to be able to like do something different and i think it, it'll help the kids engage and i think it'll help you yeah That's and nice. watch the black violin master class yeah 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 <laughs> should have started off with that <laughs> Uh, Clifton's asking, how did he get a sound heard? Um, you know, that's a that's a uh, that's that's the main question for everybody. I think every time we put out something, we're just trying to figure out how to get the most ears on it, the most ears, the most eyes on it. Um, you know, a believe in yourself. B show it to everybody that will listen to it. Um, I would say also look for interesting collaborations. You know, um, great ways to be able to build your following is to. Um, work with other people who are trying to do the same um i think also um yeah just be um be fearless and just you know play it for everyone you know yeah and also i think we live in a very visual world right now where everybody wants to see something right they want to see whatever it is they want to whatever that song is they want to see that video so i would th i would say you don't have to come up with something you know a thirty thousand dollar video or even a hundred dollar dollar video you got you have an iphone you have a phone just come up with something that that can that demonstrates what this song and, and, and your music is about and i think it's important because that will connect your song to different people better you know what i mean and um it doesn't necessarily need to be that way but i think you know people nowadays kind of expect that they expect to hear a song than a video even if it's something where you come up with this cool little visual and the song is playing and all you do is seeing something cool on on the screen i think that helps um engage people to your to your sound and your music so yeah the visual matters d major scale well i i can't play it very well but Yeah, just um, we have we'll put up um, some resources on our website so that you guys can see that. And, you know, we'll give give is it Nicole? Was it yes. just like so Nicole can have uh, a chart of the D major scale. And again, even with that, like, you know, like I said, I don't play it really well because every time I play, it, I'm always working on it. Yeah, so practice makes perfect.
Uh, yes, Tiffany asked about the Black Violin Foundation. Uh, yeah, it's been, you know, obviously crazy with this um, pandemic happening, but we do still plan on um, giving out scholarships this year. Um, the foundation is really about, the first phase of our foundation is about, um, you know, it's an innovative musical grant that we are offering right now. Um, I think the time, the application period is ended, and I think we already got all the applicants for this year. And um, I believe um, that and the way that the, 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 the situation works is that we are basically trying to be a, a gap filler for anyone that, say, has a talented kid but, uh, you know, doesn't have an instrument or, or doesn't have access to lessons or, you know, maybe you're really talented and you need a, you know, a flight to, to that college to audition to that college. Maybe you need to figure out how to get into that college or how to practice the repertoire so, if, you know, to prepare you for the auditions. We want to be sort of that that go between, so we have the Black Violin Foundation dot org where we are offering that. I think there's another round of scholarships that will happen either later this year or the beginning of next year for those who are interested. If you want to donate, Black Violin Foundation dot org. Um, Please donate. Donations. The best method away of remembering it. Well, um, while you're playing. While you're playing, I mean, <laughs> you could write it down and just put it in front of you. That's one way to do it, <laughs> especially at the beginning. For us, it's like we kind of just feel it now, you know. It's like I don't even need to be like, oh, this is in B or, or in D. I kind of I feel when it is. And, and that happens over time. That happens yeah. after you've been doing it for a while. Um, so just work at it. I would say maybe write it down for now just so you know that's in D or, you know, what key it's in. And, uh, and it keeps it, you just keep you Yeah, standing. it'll naturally be where you, you pick up a piece of music and you start playing and you know it's in G, it's you know it's in C, and then you just continue to play unless the key signature, uh, unless it changes, you know, midway or whatever. But it comes that comes over time. I don't, you know I mean? You can put a piece of paper in to show you, to remind you what key is in, but um, I think it's something that will just come over time. I mean, especially when you're playing sheet music, you know. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We're going to end with, like we said, like we promised, we're going to end with one of our songs. Uh, it's a song that, you know, I think is really great for right now. It's uh, for anyone that's, you know, trying to think about what's next for them and, um, you know, living with this and, and afterwards. Um, so this one is Dreamer. Uh, don't forget to follow us uh, on Facebook.com, forward slash Black Violin Music. YouTube, subscribe, Black Violin, at Black Violin, Instagram, Twitter. This is Dreamer. This is the day when I finish the race I make it somehow No matter how long it takes This is the day when I go all the way I make it my own And say here's to the dreamers Hey Cheers to the dreamers Where are the leaders? Yes, yes, I'm a dreamer. This is the time when I make my own eyes Gonna reach up my hands and pull down the stars This is my time, it's been coming so long I see it now, hey Here's to the dreamers Cheers to the dreamers I'm a dreamer. Scott, we can't say I can do that. But what we can say is that I can have my dream. Have a dream. That dream that you hold in your mind. That it's possible. Let's say that together, please. It's possible. It's possible. Here's to the dream.
Thank you guys very much. See you next Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. 11 a.m. Pacific. Love you guys.